from KFDM Channel 6, you're watching Live at 5 with Liz Wiggins. FBI agents tonight arrest a man they believe is responsible for last week's robbery at a Beaumont Federal Credit Union. I'm Courtney Zabowski, and I'll have a live report next. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. The search is over tonight. The man police say robbed the Beaumont Municipal Employees Credit Union last Wednesday is behind bars. Officers say a combination of things led to his arrest, including Channel 6 viewers' tips. Courtney Zabowski has been following this story, and she joins us now live from the U.S. Attorney's Office in downtown Beaumont with the latest. Courtney? Well, as FBI agents arrested 35-year-old Joseph Leland Everest just about 3 this afternoon at his Houston home. Now, authorities say what led to the arrest was a bike he bought at a Beaumont pawn shop. Now, that same bike, along, along with a shirt, were recovered near the Village Creek boat ramp earlier this week. Now, joining me now is Assistant U.S. Attorney Johnny Stevens. And, Mr. Stevens, what do you consider the breaking point in this case? Several things helped, Courtney. Obviously, we were able to connect the shirt, the cap, and the bicycle to the defendant. But when he bought the bike at a pawn shop on the day of the robbery, we were able to get the video from that pawn shop as well as the video from the Municipal Credit Union, and they certainly matched and connected back to the defendant at his home. Right, well, we have all seen the surveillance video. How key was that in this investigation? Well, it certainly is a key because it not only gives you the general nature of who you're looking for, but when you can get other corroborating evidence that matches to uh, that video, then you can show it to other witnesses who can then say, yes, that's the person I know who may have a connection with the crime. And we did catch him as he was about to move from his Houston address. He had his belongings in a trailer packed and attached to a truck that matched the general uh, characteristics of the truck that we were looking for and had he left the area he might have been very difficult to catch so we really have to thank the fbi the beaumont police department the texas rangers and citizens for all helping catch this criminal is there anything else you can tell us about uh, everest what he does what if he has family that kind of information we know he allegedly had a lawn care service in houston he had a for sale sign in his front yard and he was about to leave Obviously, he thought he could come over here, commit a crime, get some money, and then leave the area, and maybe we wouldn't be able to catch him. But he was wrong. We have good law enforcement officers, and we have a citizenry who will bound together to connect uh, and catch criminals, because we're in this together, and we're going to do all we can to keep this community safe against violent predators. Well, obviously, you've been working on this case since day one. When did you start realizing that you had your guy? Oh, and then the last 24 hours, a lot of things came together. We were getting close, though, 72 hours ago. But we obviously can't commit until we're certain, because we're not going to make a mistake at this stage. But also, we had to work fast, because we, were, we knew he had, there were indications he was going to be leaving. And if he left, then he may have been very difficult to catch. Well, it's good you caught him. Thank you very much. I appreciate you joining us and Liz um, Robert or excuse me Joseph Leland Everest faces up to 20 years in federal prison and of course we'll have more on this story at tonight at 6 and 10. That is if he's found guilty. Now Courtney we understand that you were at the courthouse today for another reason. Right well originally we were down here because earlier today um, or actually this afternoon Wilbur Ellison the man who was shot during a robbery um, in Port Arthur he was Domino's pizza delivery man well he appeared in a federal courtroom now as you might remember he was also, um, we found out earlier this week, that he was one of the 10 most wanted fugitives, fugitives in Alabama. This morning, um, it was determined that he will be extradited back to Alabama, where he will face charges of trying to cross state lines with a minor for the purpose of sexual abuse. Um, federal marshals, well, U.S. marshals will escort him back to Alabama. All right, a lot happening down there in downtown Beaumont today. Thanks so much. Courtney Zabowski reporting live. A two-year-old boy tonight has died after firefighters pull him from a burning house in Beaumont. The fire began just about 2.30 this afternoon at 6600 Rebecca Street in North Beaumont. A man and his two children were inside the home at the time of the fire. The man and his six-month-old daughter got out with minor injuries, but firefighters had to perform CPR on the man's two-year-old son. He was brought by ambulance to Krista St. Elizabeth Hospital, where he later died. Firefighters are not releasing the boy's name, and investigators are trying to find out how the fire started. The flu season is long gone, but Beaumont emergency rooms are still jam-packed. Officials from both hospitals here in Beaumont say off and on for the past six months, their emergency rooms have been on what is known as drive-by status. 
When a hospital is on drive-by, it means they are at full capacity and are not able to admit any more ambulance patients into their ERs. Healthcare providers say overcrowding in the ER has a lot to do with recent closures of smaller medical clinics in the region like those in Winnie and in Silsby. But they say there is something patients can do to help. Um, I believe maybe a small solution would be some of these minor emergencies would uh, go into the minor care center or go into like um, their doctors instead, instead of going and flooding the hospital ERs. The number one problem patients say they see from overcrowding is a longer wait to see a doctor. Department of Public Safety officers continue to investigate a late night traffic accident on Highway 73 in Jefferson County. Two cars were involved in the wreck that happened one mile west of Taylor Bayou Bridge after 10 last night. Port Arthur firefighters used the jaws of life to rescue one passenger from a car. Life flight and two ambulances responded to the scene. Four people were taken to area hospitals. Information on the victim's conditions was not available. Today, the Natchez River Festival named its 2,000 Citizen of the Year. And our 2,000 Citizen of the Year is Dr. James M. Simmons, president of Lamar University of Omaha. Dr. Jimmy Simmons was nearly speechless today when he accepted his award at the Beaumont Hilton. The Natchez River Festival says it chose Simmons as Citizen of the Year because of the nonstop dedication he has shown to Beaumont. Simmons tells Channel 6 nothing would be possible without the support of the faculty, students, and alumni of Lamar University. It feels wonderful, but uh, again, I want to focus this on Lamar University. And uh, I think. Uh, I will accept the honor, but uh, our students and faculty and staff, and alumni at the university are so important to us, and uh, I think, although it honors me, uh, it's, it's, it's the university that's the core of all this. Simmons is no stranger to awards. This year alone, the Sales Marketing and Executive Club named Simmons Executive of the Year, and the Press Club of Southeast Texas named him the 1999 Newsmaker of the Year. In national news, families of the victims in the Columbine High School shooting tonight are outraged. The county attorney's office is planning to sell copies of the video of the attack a year ago. Manuel Gallegas reports. Surveillance cameras captured frightening images during the Columbine High School shooting. Now the Jefferson County Attorney's Office is selling a tape of those images to anyone who wants a copy, $25 each. Parents of the shooting victims can't believe it. It's just outrageous, the, the lack of sensitivity for the victims in this matter. On Monday, the Sheriff's Department was ordered to turn over the surveillance tapes to families who are suing the department, claiming officers bungled the siege. But why the county attorney is selling the tapes is unclear. The tapes do not show children getting shot, but the cafeteria tape does show students scattering as the gunmen detonate a bomb and begin shooting. The tape also includes three musical songs which incensed families. Only a few families have already seen it. It's going to be very difficult for the families. Uh, you know, how my clients were able to sit through the first viewing of it at the Sheriff's Department last week, I'll never know. Neither the Sheriff's Department nor the county attorney would comment on the release of the tapes because of the ongoing legal battle. But the Sheriff's Department spokesman said recently that officers are offended and hurt by the accusations of the victims' families. Manuel Gallegas, CBS News, Los Angeles. In addition to the cafeteria scenes, the tape includes footage taken later in the school library where Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris killed 10 of their 13 victims and themselves. The bodies were removed before the later footage was made, but there was still blood on the carpet and police tape showing bodies' locations. Coming up later on Live at 5, we'll tell you about a multiple birth that's stunning even some professionals in the medical business. But first, skin cancer is on the rise, even though information on protecting yourself from the disease is more available than ever. Details in our Six on Health report coming up. The summer season is just around the corner, and if you're one of those people that just loves to be out in the sun, well, we have some pretty bad news for you. Skin cancer is on the rise. Kathy Moss has the worrisome details in tonight's Six on Health report. Yes, I always was at beaches and... Miami Beach and this beach and lakes and whatever. 77-year-old Raymond Rourke is now paying the price for years in the sun. He had the worst kind of skin cancer, a malignant melanoma removed from his chest. I'm going to have you sit up and I want to look at your back. 
Raymond ran into problems in the first place by ignoring a suspicious-looking mole. He's part of an alarming new statistic. Despite all the warnings we've heard before about the sun, skin cancer cases are rising faster than ever. In fact, today, dermatologists citing new findings from their science journal say one in five Americans will get skin cancer in their lifetime. That's up 8% from last year. Dr. Desiree yeah, Ratner see says be sure to examine yourself once a month. People need to look for a spot that's growing, bleeding, changing, not going away. A mole that um, is asymmetric, has border irregularity, has different colors in it, or is bigger than a pencil eraser. Other important news? Kids are still going unprotected from the sun. 35-year-old Dan O'Leary believed the bump he had discovered on his scalp during a haircut came from a sunburn when he was a kid. I'm sure the sun bead, beaded down right on that spot on my head. Sunscreen is still one of the best ways to protect yourself, and there is more protection in the higher number you choose. They say it takes one full ounce to cover your whole body. That's about the amount in a shot glass. So some worshippers like Dan and Raymond Brian found out the hard here. way what dermatologists keep telling us, that there's no such thing as a safe tan. Kathy Moss for CBS News, New York. The American Academy of Dermatology has much more information on skin cancer. If you'd like to get more information for yourself, check out their website at aad.org. And we wanted to remind you tonight we are going to give you the chance to win something special for your mom for Mother's Day. On Stage Salons in Belmont is giving away Mother's Day make makeovers rather online, along with a bouquet of flowers from the West End Floral Studios. For the next three weeks, we're inviting you to go to the KFDM website and submit a picture of your mom along with a brief explanation of why your mom needs a makeover. Click on the On Stage Makeover banner and get details. And if you don't have access to the Internet, you can also send in the explanation and picture to us here. Regular mail. Here's the address. And we will announce the winner here on Live at 5 every Friday until Mother's Day. And coming up next on Live at 5, Kerry Cooper has the latest on the forecast. And then later, we'll tell you about a conference coming to Southeast Texas specifically for women. Stay with us. Tonight at 6 o'clock on Channel 6, we'll take a look at why some patients are being turned away by local hospitals. It's springtime, and as you know, thunderstorms are likely to pop up yeah, out of nowhere. That's right, especially up to our north, Liz, in north Texas and Oklahoma. You know, that's going to be the case, it looks like, later tonight into tomorrow. There'll be some heavy storms developing in the Texas Panhandle on over into Oklahoma. And this time of the year, when our winds are out of the north in the upper levels of the atmosphere, sometimes these storms tend to work a little farther south than our models indicate. So we'll be watching for a chance of storms anyway tomorrow night into Friday and Friday evening. Right now, no rain to show you on live Doppler radar. Let's go to our WeatherNet station now. It has been a warm day. In fact, most areas have been in the upper 80s this afternoon. Kirbyville Elementary, 85 degrees. High there, 87. We have 85 right now here in Beaumont. Still low humidities. We still yet to really see a good onshore flow except along the coast. Satellite view will confirm what direction the winds are out of the northwest and the upper levels of the atmosphere. You can see the clouds moving from north to south across Oklahoma into Texas, and there is a frontal system back over the Four Corners area west of Denver that will work into North Texas later tonight. And there'll be some storms develop along that, and these will tend to work to the east and southeast uh, tomorrow into tomorrow evening. So we may see one or two storms try to work in the viewing area by tomorrow night. Fair and warmer tonight, light south winds, lows very warm, mid-60s, about 64, 65 here in Beaumont. And for tomorrow, one or two thunderstorms late for the lakes area. It'll be hot. Highs will be in the mid-80s and a 10% chance of a storm by tomorrow night. All right. Thanks so much, Carrie. Well, it is called Lifestyles, and it's a day-long conference for women. You'll hear about ways to improve your workplace, your home life, and all of your relationships. Charlene Mobley is a motivational speaker, and she is here to give us just a sample of what you'll hear if you go tomorrow. Hi. Nice to Hi. see you. Hi, Liz. Good to be here. Well, wonderful. Now, you're going to be talking about why did I get up this morning. Yes. So why do we get up? Why in the morning. You, <laughs> you know, I ask myself that as I'm laying there in bed, going, do I really have to get well, up today? Well, I ask that a lot of times, used to, why did I get up this morning? Mm -hmm. And I've come to the conclusion that I'd like to ask people what they're going to do when they get up. Are they going to make a difference to somebody else? But of course, first of all, I like to get a little humor in the first 10 minutes because I don't like a boring speaker. Right. I heard right. one not long ago that would make Al Gore look like a Pep oh, my leader. goodness. Oh, my but goodness. But I try to build it up to begin with, with humor, and uh, get them to laughing. 
one of settled down and woke up. Now, will that include any of your experience as a realtor yes, here in Southeast little, Texas? And little. what about your, your grandchildren, your many children and grandchildren? Oh, yes, I always have an opportunity to bring that in. I have seven of the most wonderful children. My goodness. Of course, 17 precious grandchildren. Wow. And, 20 and a husband of how many years? Be 61 in August. Now, see, that's what I want to hear about. 61 years. All right, mm -hmm. you're going to be talking to women about why you get up in yes. the morning. You'll also be hearing, if you go tomorrow, about how to beat stress, how to celebrate an uppity attitude, and if you're all stressed up and know where to go, Mamie McCullough is going to tell you how to deal with that. Lifestyles is a conference for women. It takes place tomorrow at the Port Arthur Civic Center. Registration is at 8 a.m. You can register then. Things kick off about 8.30. It's $25 there, and it is a day-long conference. So you will be getting out of there about 3.30 or 4 o'clock, and there is the phone number to call if you need more information. Charlie Mobley, thank you so much. We'll see you out there tomorrow. Okay, thank you for inviting me. We'll see you then. Well, I'm and forward to it. Me too. Coming up next on Live at 5, we'll take you out live to the CP Rehab for a preview of the Rubber Ducky Derby. Stay with us. Thursday. Educating our children is priority one. But are bond issues the only way to pay? Within two to three years, your taxes are going to go up 9%. Creative options include a leasing plan where BISD borrows money now and pays it back later. The biggest misconception is that we've always been doing for our money, um, spend money without asking voters. How will you vote May 6th? Watch Bricks and Bonds Thursday on KFDM. You can count on us. The CP Rehab Center tonight is getting its ducks in a row for the Rubber Ducky Derby. The annual duck race helps children with disabilities. Erica Randall is at the CP Rehab Center in Belmont with details on how you can get involved. Hi, Erica. Hi, Liz. Well, I'm here with the good folks at CP Rehab where they are getting all their ducks in a row. So how do you do today? Just ducky, I thought so. From what I understand, Liz, there are going to be about 13,000 ducks jump, dumped into the Natchez River this weekend, and it's all for a worthy cause. Joining me now is Connie Berry. Connie, tell me what the Rubber Ducky Derby is all about. Well, Erica, this is our 10th year for the annual Rubber Ducky Derby, and of course it will be this Saturday at Riverfront Park. The duck race will actually be at 2 o'clock. Earlier that morning, we'll have the Nature's River Parade at 11, and of course, Beaumont Junior Forum's Family Fun Festival will begin around noon with lots of free activities and games for the children. You won't want to miss that, and of course, we'll have wonderful food vendors down there with even a crawfish bowl. Um, and of course, I think one of the things people always turn to is the wonderful prizes we have. We have 16 great prizes this year. Connie, tell us about some of the prizes. Well, our grand prize is a Yamaha jet ski or a personal watercraft, if you will, from uh, Golden Triangle Cycle Center. We have a lady's beautiful $2,200 ring and just some wonderful great prizes, including a portrait from Marklow Imagery. Uh, just so many wonderful prizes, but I think one of the things we must remember, it's not just about the prizes, as Dan and JB has said so many times on the PSA, <laughs> but also about helping our more than 600 physically challenged children right here in Southeast Texas. Absolutely. I mean, the children are what's most important in this event. So tell the people out there, where can they adopt a duck? Well, they can stop by. At this time, they can stop by any community bank or any Monroe's, or they can call us here uh, for more information at 838-6568. And I encourage everyone listening today to please adopt a, a duck in honor of your healthy child or your healthy grandchild. It's such a great way, a great tribute. It's a great thing to do for our more than 600 kids here at the CP Center. One thing I just want to add is a lot of folks think we're just seeing children with cerebral palsy, but it's cancer, muscular dystrophy, uh, any type of physical disability. What about some of those busy people during the week and they can't get out and, and adopt a duck? Will they still be able to adopt one right oh, before the races? That's right, of course. They can come down to Riverfront Park and we'll be selling the ducks up until about 145 this Saturday. Be sure and put it on your calendar. I know it's a busy day. A lot of activities going on in Southeast Texas, but you won't want to miss this one. Well, thank you, Connie. Once again, Liz, it's going to be a great event, but it's all for helping children out there who really need it. Back to you. The Rubber Ducky Derby, always a fun event. All right, thanks so much, Erica. Coming up later on Live at 5, while giving birth to quadruplets is a miracle in itself, we have a story that will top even that. We'll show you. But first, the Texas Rangers are trying to turn their luck around when it comes to the Red Sox. Can they do it? Brian Lockery and Sports next. And Brian Lockery is back from a few days off. 
Hi, Brian. Nice Hi. to have you back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. H had a lot of fun uh, out in California, but uh, am glad to be back uh, here, get back into the swing of things. And tonight you're talking about the Rangers. Talking about the Texas Rangers, and uh, speaking of getting back into the swing of things, they'd like to do that. 8 and 11 on the year, they'd like to get things going. Now, last night the Rangers did something that no one has done since last year, and that's take a lead against the Red Sox ace Pedro Martinez. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold that lead. Boston won 6 to 3. It was Pedro's. 10th straight regular season win. That's 12 in a row if you count the postseason. Martinez is about the only pitcher keeping the ball in the ball yards this year. Today, the Red Sox and Rangers squared off in a day game. Plenty of moths out there bothering the fielders and hitters as well. Not bothering the Red Sox too much, though. Mark Clark gets rocked after getting the first two outs of the inning. He lets the next four batters get on base. Carl Everett takes him deep. The former Astro with the three-run homer to put Boston up four to nothing. And the Red Sox go on to win this one 14 to 4. Mark Clark gets rocked in this one. The Rangers with the loss. The Yankees, a 2 0 winner. Derek Jeter with a homer in that one, as did Tino Martinez, also homered. And San Francisco, their fifth straight win, 8 to 7 over Florida, their second straight in extra innings. Well, Cleveland offensive tackle Orlando Brown might be making a federal case out of this flag throwing incident that happened last year. Brown has hired former OJ attorney Johnny Cochran to possibly sue the NFL. Now, to give you some background on what happened, the referee threw a, threw a penalty flag on a play last year. It stuck in Brown's face mask, injuring his right eye. Brown, whose father is blind from glaucoma, said concern for his eyesight caused him to storm back on the field. You saw him right there push the referee to the ground. The NFL suspended Brown the last two weeks of the season for the attack. Brown hospitalized for six days with bleeding behind the eye. And the team's medical staff est estimates it might take six to eight months before his vision is restored completely. And Johnny Cochran's on the case. So there might be a wow. lawsuit against the NFL. And his eye now is, he's still blind in that eye? Well, not blind, but he, he has vision problems and still has it. And they say will still have it for the next six to eight months. My goodness. All right. Thanks, Brian. Sure. Finally, tonight, when you hear multiple births these days, it's almost always tied to fertility drugs. But in Boston, one family is celebrating a natural multiple birth involving more than one set of identical twins. Introducing Kyle, Max, Cameron, and Sam quadruplets. The quadruplets are actually two sets of identical twins, Kyle and Max, and Cam and Sam. The boys weighed in from four, point, four pounds, five ounces, all the way down to three pounds, seven ounces. And in case you're wondering what the chances are of two sets of identical twins being born as quadruplets without fertility drugs, experts say one in 24 million. And now we have Larry in the news with a look at the stories coming up at 6 and 10. Hi, Larry. Good afternoon, Liz. Ron Devise tonight will talk to firefighters who tried desperately to save the life of a child who was trapped in a burning home. And coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, Angel San Juan talks to a family that has been watching the Ilian Gonzalez story more closely than most other people. That and more coming up at 10 o'clock, and I'll be back in a half hour, Liz. All right, thanks, Larry. And be sure to join us tomorrow on Live at 5. We'll take you out live to the Hilton for a porcelain arts convention. And as always, we'll introduce you to our newest Thursday's pet. That's tomorrow on Live at 5. Have a good night.